Arduino microcontroller boards are the go-to option for most basic digital electronics projects. They're easy to use and used by many. But what is a microcontroller, you might ask? A microcontroller is like a very basic computer on a chip. You upload programs to it, and it runs that program code over and over in a loop. This code can control the microcontroller pins by powering them on or off, or detecting whether a positive or negative charge is connected to them. The chip itself uses additional external components to provide timing, USB, and power support. The Arduino includes all of these things on a single board along with rows of socket headers, which are connected to the microcontroller pins, making it easy to get your project up and running quickly. There are many flavors of Arduino available, but when you're just getting started, go with an Arduino Uno. This is the most vanilla model available and should cover most common project requirements. One important element, which can't be included on the board, is the software used to write Arduino code. We, of course, run that on our computer. A basic Arduino program, or sketch, consists of two parts, the setup and the loop. The setup section includes code we want to run only once when the board first starts up, and the loop contains code that we want to run again and again forever in a loop. So for example, let's say I want to flash an LED connected to pin 3. In the setup, I'll tell the Arduino to set the pin we're using to output mode so it can provide power to the LED. Then in the loop, I'll turn the power for that pin on or high. Tell the Arduino to wait for let's say half a second, and then turn the power pin off or low, and then wait for another half second. Once this code is finished running and the Arduino reaches the end of the loop, it will return to the beginning and run all the code over again and again and again. So if we upload the sketch to our board, we can see it doing just what we told it to. The LED powers on for half a second, then goes dark for another half second, and repeats. So that's an example of using a pin in output mode, but what about input? The simplest form of input hardware is a momentary push button. I'll connect one side of this button to the 5 volt pin and the other side to pin 7. Now in my code, I'll set pin 7 to input mode in the setup. And in the loop, I'll check to see if pin 7 is high or connected to positive voltage. And if it is, I'll light the LED by setting the LED pin high. If it's not, I'll set the LED low. When the button is pushed, a connection is made between pin 7 and 5 volts. So far, we've been using what's called digital input. This means the Arduino checks to see if there is or isn't a positive charge present at a pin. But there's also another type, analog input. Analog input measures the amount of voltage present at a pin. And because it's a special function, only several pins can actually use it. We can create a variable voltage input by hooking up a small potentiometer. One side of the potentiometer connects to power and the other to ground, while the middle lead connects to analog pin zero. Now, I could alter my code to light the LED once the potentiometer is turned past a certain point, but that's a little boring, no? Luckily, the Arduino can simulate analog output, which gives us the ability to dim the LED in response to readings from the potentiometer. So in my code, I'll read the analog value from the potentiometer and then turn around and send it right back out to the LED. So 
So you see, the strength of Arduino is that each little part and concept can be adapted to new and interesting components, sensors, even motors. And this is made even easier through the use of Arduino libraries. Now, libraries are collections of pre-written code that allow you to perform complex operations simply. For example, controlling a servo motor. While I could spend hours learning how they work and writing the code for an Arduino to control it, it's much faster to include the Arduino servo library instead. So now, with only a few changes, I can convert the potentiometer's position into motorized motion. In addition to all the individual components you can use with an Arduino, there are add-on boards called shields. Shields are sort of like the hardware equivalent of libraries. Shields provide specialized functionality via a pre-designed circuit board that mounts right on top of the Arduino. There are shields for sound playback, controlling motors, LCD displays, LED matrices, GPS, many, many different uses. All this variety of hardware, example code, libraries, and the huge community of people who use Arduino means that it's really easy to do pretty much anything electronic with one of these little boards. So if someone asks, what can I do with an Arduino? I suppose the best response would be, what do you want to do?